Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing super awesome today. I'm in Lightroom Classic in this video and I'll be walking through a demo of something I mentioned in a recent Lightroom Classic video that I did, which is that video right there if you want to check it out. Uh, but in that video, I was using a specific tool called calibration and I use that to adjust colors and sort of create color where some did not exist in fairness. And I mentioned that in the video, but that was a landscape. And one of the things I mentioned was that this tool, while I do use it on landscapes some, it's incredibly useful on cityscapes and street scenes and things like that because those kind of colors you can impact and not make it look over the top. You just kind of color shift and it works beautifully and it's fantastic and I absolutely love it. That's what we're covering in this video. I'm going to show you a few examples where I've used this tool and then I'm going to walk through a full workflow. Let's hit it, my friends. Uh, I'm in Lightroom, of course, and I've got this photo here that I recently took, and it started life like that, and after the edit, it looks like that, but uh, I'm not going to go through every aspect of this photo, but I'm going to turn off calibration, and you can see what it looks like there, and then if I turn it back on, you'll see the colors shift pretty significantly, uh, but gently, right? So it's a big color shift overall, but it's not like a unbelievable color shift. Let me show you another one. And this was a fun neon shot. I love these kind of things. In cities, they're a lot of fun to shoot, uh, especially in lower light. Uh, but sometimes the light looks like that and your photo looks like that. But after the edit, it looks like that. And that's a lot of masking and things like that. But the calibration component, once again, is a nice color shift, a lot more vibrant and a lot more punch. So there it is before and there it is now. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And what I want to do is grab a photo, walk through a full workflow to give you an example of how you can use this in your own edits. Okay, so we have this photo here shot in London a number of years ago, kind of a street photograph, for lack of a better word. And I like the photograph. It's not amazing, but I want to bring it to life. And there's a number of things that you can do. And we're going to be doing those in this video because this is a full workflow. Let me get my notes. I almost forgot that. That's what the photo looks like now. Now that's after using all these, uh, making these adjustments in basic. Uh, number one, I brightened it. You can see it was quite dark. I brightened it quite a bit. And what I want to do is two things, really. I want to emphasize a few aspects of the photo. And I also want to make sure that that phone booth is a lot more visible. We've kind of gotten there. We're going to do some masking and things like that. But then overall, I want to shift the colors because one of the things that I find in cities at night, if you're out shooting these and you will uh, will have likely experienced this as well, is that there's a lot of street lights and they give off this yellow. Sometimes it's almost kind of verges on green kind of look and I, I just don't like it. And if you like it and that's your thing, totally cool. There's nothing wrong with it. I just don't like it. And that's where calibration comes in so nicely because you can shift the tones and the colors overall and make a huge impact. One of the things I did here was shift temperature significantly. You can see it was fairly warm. I want warmth, but I don't want warmth everywhere. So let me put this back where it was, 2883, I think it was. Um, and we're going to take it from there and jump into masking. So I'm going to go and I'm going to get an object mask. And the first thing I want to do is get this phone booth. And this is one of the things that's great about Lightroom. It does a good job of finding the objects. You paint it on and there it is. That's pretty much it. So I'm going to just lift the exposure a bit because I want to brighten the phone booth. As I said, I want that to be more visible. Uh, being an American, I still just enjoy the novelty of seeing these things uh, whenever I'm in London and thus I shoot them because they're just interesting, I think. Uh, so I'm going to lift the saturation as well. So I'm going to bring that up about a point, uh, not a point, about a 40 or 41. And I'm going to add some clarity as well, give a little bit of punch. So that's going to be like a 42. So pretty high, uh, but I've got much better visibility. So telephone booth before, telephone booth now. That's looking good. I need to do some additional masks. The next one is actually going to be a sky mask. So I'm going to select sky and you will find that it also grabs some of this building over here. I'm just going to click subtract with a brush and then I'm going to come over here and erase that. And so that's gone. The rest of it, it overlaps some of the building up here. That's fine. Honestly, in a scene like this, I don't worry too much about that level of accuracy because what I'm going to do is just make this darker. So I'm going to do like a negative 0.6 or something, 0.65. Uh, right in there, make that a little bit darker. And I like skies, even if it's a dark night sky, to be cooler. So I'm going to cool that off with the temperature, like a negative 30. And I love that about the masking in Lightroom because you basically have this, the basic panel all again, uh, plus point color and things like that. It's super great. I mean, the way they did masking and, and the tools here just really come in handy and help you really craft the image. And that's what I'm all about. I'm all about crafting the image and creating 
the look that I want in a photo. So that sky before and the sky now, darker, bluer. I think we're getting there. I'm going to do a couple of more things with masks. The next one is going to be a linear gradient, and I'm going to do that here across the top. Uh, so something, you know, maybe about like that. I need to lift that up. I don't want to cover too much of the top of the phone booth, but I want a nice, generous fade. So it is going to grab a little bit of that phone booth, and all I'm going to do is just drop the exposure. So negative 0.5, something like that, 0.6. All I'm doing is kind of framing my photo, and that's what I often do with masks as I'm editing. I'll sometimes do it at the end, but I'm saving the calibration, or you could call it the color grade, for the very end. And I think you'll see the difference there. It'll be pretty significant. But before and after, just a shift there. And if you want, you can come in and then just, you know, this is one of the nice things about the way Lightroom does masking is these masks, uh, you can just come and move them uh, later uh, after you've already made the edit. So before, after, I actually kind of like that better. So I'm going to leave that, and then I'm going to grab another linear gradient. And this one's going to come from here. And again, I'm just kind of framing the photo. So a generous fade, which is this gradient zone here. So just a nice generous fade. And drop that exposure, and I check my notes, and I go like a negative one here. And then I'm going to come over here, maybe lift that a little bit. But if you look at the before and after, before and after, all I'm doing is just kind of uh, darkening the foreground because there's nothing there. Uh, and uh, it's kind of a, a waste of space. I'm going to go a little bit darker even. So 1.8. So pretty dark overall. But if you look at the before and after, before and after, that's too dark now. So let me pull that back a little bit. You would adjust this to your heart's content, of course. Uh, and every photo is different. So all I've done there is kind of um, adjust a few things. I adjusted the phone booth to make it brighter, give it a little bit more pop. And the rest was just lighting. I darkened the sky, made it bluer. I darkened the overall top, and then I darkened the bottom with these uh, linear gradients. And the last thing I want to do with a mask is a radial gradient. And I do this a lot in my photos. And I often will do it kind of at the end. And that is essentially just kind of creating a linear uh, gradient with a bit of a pop in the photo. So I'm going to do something about I don't know. I need to play with this a little bit here. So maybe about like that. All I'm trying to do is create a little bit of more pop or interest in the center of the photo. And a couple of ways to do that, the three ways that I can think of to do that are you increase the visibility by adding light, or you add a pop of color, or you add a pop of uh, detail, in this case clarity. Uh, I'm in fact doing all three. Uh, but that's kind of how I think about is to draw the viewer's attention to a specific part of a photo is uh, you make it a little bit brighter, which I'm just done, but that makes the highlights a little too much. So I'm going to pull those down. Uh, then I'm going to add tint and temperature. So I'm going to warm it up a little bit. So I'm going to do like a 14 or 15 there on warmth, and a little bit more than that on tint. So maybe like a 16 or 17, getting a nice little bit of color there, which I like. And then the clarity that I talked about, a nice little pop of clarity. So I'm going to do pretty high here, like a 70. That's, that's probably a little too high. Uh, it's definitely too high if you use that across the entire image. When you're containing that with a mask in a smaller part of the image, I think you can get away with it. Every photo is different, so you know, experiment, uh, season to taste, as I like to say. But if you look at the before of that center area, I've made it pop, right? Before and after, right? Before and after. A little crisper, thanks to clarity, a little warmer, uh, and a little bit more visibility, thanks to the increase in brightness. So if you look at all the masks together, the photo before, the photo now. I mean, we've kind of reinvented the photo. And honestly, you get to this part and you're thinking, wow, the photo looks a lot different, right? Before, after, before, after, after, there we go. Uh, and it looks a lot better. But this, this video is really about how you can use calibration. And it is the secret weapon for cityscapes for fixing colors that I think just don't often look that good in cityscapes at night. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go into the blues. I'm going to start with the saturation, and I, I go to 100. Now, uh, you can get away. Uh, I think I get away with it in this photo, going pretty high on some of these numbers. Um, I think, my personal opinion is, in cityscapes, you can do a little bit more color, a little bit more over the top, and a little bit more uh, uh, broad color shift, and kind of get away with it without people saying, that's totally fake or overdone. In a landscape, I think you have to be a little bit more gentle with it. So in other words, in using calibration on a landscape, I would normally be a little bit more gentle with it. Um, and in a cityscape, I might be a little bit more aggressive with it. Season to taste, do whatever you like. They're your photos. Just my kind of way of thinking. Um, with green, I tend to start also with blue. 
And I also tend not to use all three on a landscape. In this case, I am using all three. Uh, but in uh, green, I'm going to saturate to about a positive 18 or 19, um, 20. That looks good. And the hue, I'm actually going left. So I'm going to go negative 60 something, something about like that. You can kind of see what's happening with the color. I mean, I like this stuff. Uh, I hope you like it. And if you don't, that's okay. Um, at the very least, maybe this will give you some ideas about what you can do. You don't have to like my edit, but hopefully you like the idea of what we're talking about here. Uh, and I'm going to take red. And I'm going to go up on red as well. So like a 34, 35. So about in there, 36. I'm going to pull that back a little bit. Maybe, maybe 32. Uh, and then the hue, I'm actually going to go negative, like a negative 17. So something about like that. And the other thing I like to do is actually play with the shadows. And uh, you can take the tint in the shadows, and I'm going to go to about a 28. And all that's doing is creating some of that magenta look in the shadows. But because that magenta is a little bit darker color, it kind of cools it off. I will often add blue to my shadows, um, and I'll do that like in color grading. But um, And that's because the darker stuff think, uh, makes me think that it should be cooler. This tint works like that a little bit. It's not exactly blue, but that tint uh, helps. So let me show you what calibration did, because I think it's a massive overhaul. And now it's a vibrant, colorful street scene at night. And I think it's believable. It is saturated, uh, but I think it's believable because you weren't there at that at that time, um, and you would look at all these different colors and think, "Wow, there's a lot of color. That's a colorful street." And you can see that the Carnaby. This is Carnaby Street in London, which is super fun to go shoot, by the way. But you can see that there's different colors here. I've just made it all a bit more vibrant, and that's thanks to calibration. So before, that's where we were with all the light changes and things like that, including some temperature changes and that sort of stuff with the radial gradient that I did in the center and what I did in the sky. But calibration just brings it to life. I absolutely adore using this tool on cityscapes at night, and this is why. So again, before, and that's with calibration. And the overall change, dark, flat, boring. Honestly, I've skipped over this photo in my library many times because I'm like, this is kind of boring. And now that I've done this edit, I'm like, I kind of like this photo. It's kind of awesome. Now, I do wish that the, the lady that happened to be in the street was a little bit more in the center. I love that her shadow is falling right here. So I got her whole shadow, uh, you know, and it didn't uh, really intersect with that post. I kind of wish she was a little bit more to the center, but you can only do so much when you're shooting in the streets. That's the power of calibration, my friends. And of course, the power of Lightroom and the tools and the masking and all that. All super important and super fun, frankly. But you can take a photo from that to that. And calibration alone took me from that, which was still, I was like, yeah, not bad, but play with calibration. I get some ri really rich colors that I love, and I think the overall color look looks kind of awesome. That's how I go about doing it in cityscapes at night with calibration in Lightroom. It's a great combination of things with mass and using calibration to control these colors and enhance them and maybe shift them and change them. But you get the point here, my friends. I hope this was helpful. By the way, I've got a free book about Lightroom. It's an ed editing guide, 17 pages of tips, tricks, and ideas and insights. If you want to check it out at the link below. Otherwise, I'll be back soon with another Lightroom video. Thanks for watching, my friends. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.